Hi, welcome in. My name is Ro. I'm a project manager turned content creator. And on my channel, you get to hang out with your online big sister for honest life advice and just general life experience. In today's video, I would like to share with you my brand new financial tracker that I've built in Notion. This financial tracker I originally made as part of my household dashboard. However, I decided to make a separate template out of it as well, because I can absolutely imagine this being useful for people without needing to get the entire household management system. This finance tracker will allow you to keep track of your bills and subscriptions descriptions, set a budget for yourself, then compare your actual expenses to your budget. It will make sure that you can track your income and your expenses and your savings. And it is set up in a way that it's available for people that are either using the basic version of Notion or the pro version of Notion. So without further ado, let's actually hop into Notion and I will show you around this dashboard and how to use it. I have made financial templates before, but I feel like they were never as in depth and as useful as this one. So let me walk you through it so that you know what you can expect. When you get to this page, I would recommend everyone to start with this first one, which is set up your budget. If you get here, I have made a six step plan to help you figure out how to budget your expenses, your income, etc. It will walk you through all of the steps one by one so that you don't need to feel overwhelmed in the process. If you see step one, basically what I tell you to do is just get a grip on your subscriptions and your bills. I tell you what the difference is, and then I just give you the table where you can actually fill in all of your bills and all of your subscriptions. Once you've done that, you start to create categories. I've created a bunch of default categories, which actually makes sense if you look at expenses, but you can add a bunch more over here. Just be mindful that the whole template is set up based on these default categories. So the more that you create, the more that you're going to have to manually add to the things in the rest of the dashboard. If you know how Notion works, that is completely fine. But if you don't know how Notion works, then I would recommend instead of actually deleting categories and creating new ones, rename the ones that are already there to fit your needs, because that way you can actually use the existing features and filters without having to go into the filter settings of all the views that I've created on this dashboard for you. Then what you do next is you're going to set up all of your budgets. So basically how much money you want to spend or want to allocate for that type of spending over here. This can be sometimes fixed things. So let's say for your housing, if you're going to pay rent, you're going to pay that per month that will add up to a certain amount per year and you have to pay that every single month. But for your clothes is more going to be like an allocation budget where you're going to say that you want to allocate $50 per month to your clothing budget. However, that doesn't mean you have to spend it every single month. So there's going to be a slight difference, but I decided to, to keep them all in one database because it allows me to later make a very clear overview between your budgets and your actual expenses. So now that you've created categories for your budget and you've actually set up your budget, all you need to do is that you actually need to set up those same categories that you've created in step two for your budget, you need to basically align those to the categories for your expenses. Those are two different databases. So unfortunately, you do have to set them up twice. But I would say in step two, it's basically the step where you also decide on your categories. And in step four, it's a really quick just copy paste. If you just use the default categories, you don't even have to do anything. In step five, you're actually gonna write your different income types. I've added three by default, which is just your salary, gifts and other. But if you want to get more specific, you can always do that in here. And then lastly, I have made an explanation on how you can use Notion's recurring templates for setting up recurring expenses. I would highly recommend that you do this if you have like recurring expenses. This can be either in terms of a bill, like let's say your rent that you need to pay every month on the 20th. Notion can actually create this for you automatically. That way, one, you save yourself a lot of time in setting up your expenses. And two, it becomes a way to track for you if you've already paid your bill because if you set up the template in a way that it creates the expense with a status of expected or not done then you will be able to see that that bill may be not paid yet and that you still have to do that or you can tick it off and say i've actually paid this bill by setting this up once you do your future self a huge favor because you can basically take all that information that you're trying to store in your head about managing your finances and put it to paper then notion will start to think for you and help you keep on track of all of your bills that you need to pay all of your recurring expenses and all of your budgeted expenses. Once you've completed all of this, you can, if you want, even delete this page. You no longer need it. It doesn't delete any of the databases. It basically just deletes the views that I've created for you. But if you want to, you can also can leave it here or you can just drag this all the way to the bottom of the page. Then from here, you can just start to use the template. This will look different for everyone. Some people really like to log their expenses and income every single day. Some people like to schedule it every once a week. Some people do this every month. Some 
Some people even do this every quarter. It really comes down to your personal preference. But as soon as you start logging, what you're going to do here is you're going to log your income and expenses in the first box. I've created different months so that you can prevent these lists from getting really, really long. So make sure that you're always on the right month. Then you're just gonna click new page. And as soon as you do that, it's gonna create this new thing. So let's say that this was my salary and that I've earned a hundred bucks and I've earned this on January 2nd. And this was actually salary, like I said, and then it is expected. No, actually I got the notification that it was paid, but it hasn't hit my bank account yet. So it is in transit right now. I'm also gonna add an expense because uh, from that salary, I actually bought some really nice pants. Uh, those were 75 and I paid those on the 3rd of January because I got paid or I knew that I was going to get paid. So I decided to already spend my money, even though it didn't even hit my bank account yet. For this, I'm going to categorize it as clothes. And I'm going to say that I have already paid this because I put in the order. You might have seen something happen down here in the yearly expenses already. As you can see, the yearly budget is empty. That's simply because in step one, I didn't set anything up. But if I had set up for my yearly expenses or my yearly budget, then I'm allowed to spend 1K on clothes in the entire year. You would see something like this like a little bar graph over here that would say 1k for clothes. The more you add in here, the bigger the bar graph and you will see basically a bar for every single thing in your budget. The same thing will happen for your yearly expenses and that way you can quickly see the difference between what you have budgeted for something and what you actually ended up spending. Both of these and everything that you will see later in the dashboard will feed off of what you enter here. And just like anything with databases, garbage in is garbage out. So if you don't keep track of your finances, this whole system collapses and this dashboard is not gonna be useful. So please schedule a little recurring reminder for yourself that can be weekly, daily, monthly, quarterly, whatever you feel comfortable with to update this so that you can actually at the end of the year see a full overview of your budget and your expenses. You might also notice that I'm using graphs here. Later in the page, I do have an overview that doesn't use graphs. It is not as intuitive, unfortunately, but considering that graphs is a pro feature of Notion and you're only allowed to have one graph in a free version of Notion, I wanted to make sure that this template is still usable and available for everyone. But with graphs being so incredibly useful, I can recommend getting Notion Pro. I've been using Notion Pro for years and I love it. For me, it's definitely worth the money. I'm going to leave you with making that decision for yourself. I just want you to know that there is a bit of this dashboard that doesn't use graphs that still allows you to keep track of your finances. But I just wanted to mention it here because obviously this is the first time that you're seeing the graphs. Then over here we have the wish list that right now comes with three categories, which is clothes, tech, and infantry. You can create as many categories here as you want, but basically this allows you to keep track of anything that you might want to buy to help with your impulsive spending. Then right below that, you'll have an overview of your subscription and bills. That is the same thing as you set up in your budget in the beginning. But if you throughout the year add any subscriptions or you just want to have a quick overview, then you can actually do that over here. This is also where you can see a list of your packages because I felt like it made sense for you to keep your package tracker on your financial dashboard because it's related to you spending money. And then below that, we have the full income versus expense tracker. So here we have the budget versus spendings. And then here we have income versus expenses. So over here, you'll be able to see your income throughout the months. So if I now add, let's say in here in March, March, I have also, I've actually earned a thousand. It was a really good month. So then you can see that in January, I have earned a hundred and in March, I have earned 1K. This gives you an overview of your earnings throughout the year. And then right next to it, you will actually see um, a total amount. So you can see how much you've earned in total. And this is also categorized by different types of income. So in this case, I've had a hundred from salary and one and 1K that is currently uncategorized. The same will happen for your expenses. So let's say that in March, I have also spent a lot of money because maybe I booked a vacation. So I'm going to put that on travel. Then you can see that in January, I've spent 75 and in March, I've spent 500. And over here, you can see that in total, I've spent 575 on clothes and public transport slash travel. I've made a separate one for savings per month. So basically your savings do count as expenses because you add them in the expenses table. I don't know if that makes sense for everyone, but I always consider that if I save 
save my money, I put it aside so that I don't spend it anymore or so that I can take it later down the line if I actually want to book a vacation that I've saved for. So I always make sure to actually add my savings as an expense. And then when I get money from my savings account, I add it as an income. This in the end will botch your overview of your income a little bit because obviously then you will add income double. I decided not to make a separate savings database because the system works for me. Let me know if that makes sense for you as well. You can also decide to not add it as an additional income as soon as you've put it away as a saving. Just accept that that is like your expense and that it's set aside as a saving and that you're not going to spend it. That depends on how you handle your savings, I would say. But basically, that also has its own graph. So you can add things in your expense database as a saving and then it will show up here over the course of a year and you can see how much you've saved in total. Then, like I said, I have also built a version that works for if you don't have graphs. The unfortunate thing in Notion is that it continuously always expands all the categories, which makes this overview look a little bit wild, but don't worry, it isn't as wild as it sounds. Let me show you what it looks like after I have collapsed all of these categories, because like I said, it's kind of annoying that Notion always opens all of them. But basically what you can see here is you can see your budget per category and your expenses per category. So here we could do is you could open this. This is the budget that you've set up in step one. So let's say that in a yearly cost, you say that you want to spend 1K. That is also what will show up in this graph over here. And then you can go over here and ex extend this and you can see, oh, I've spent 75 on clothes and then it will show you the sum at the bottom. And then you can kind of see the sum here and the sum here and just realize for yourself whether you're still in budget. It isn't as intuitive as using the graphs. It doesn't look as clean, but it does the job and it does still work for you to keep on track. It also has one for income so you can see how much you've earned throughout the year for gifts, for other and for salary. And this does allow you to continuously stay on track of everything. Also, something that is important to know, like I've said before already, is all of these are set up to work with the default categories through filters. If you actually want to add additional things to this, for the income one, every every single category that you create will get automatically added because there's no filter. But for the expense one, I did filter to make sure that the savings are not included. So the savings are over here. If you add categories, you're going to have to go in here and add those manually. So so that they actually show up in these graphs. But I do feel like if you are familiar with Notion, this shouldn't come as a surprise. And that is the whole finance dashboard. Like I explained, it is also available as a separate template. So if you do enjoy this and you want to get on top of your finances, feel free to just get this part. Thank you so much for watching my financial dashboard tour. It is actually linked in my description box so you can get it on my shop if you're interested. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I love making Notion templates for you guys. So if you have any ideas, always feel free to ask and I'll see what I can do for you. If this is your first time ever finding a video of mine, hi, welcome in. I hope you're doing well. Feel free to check out the rest of my channel. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if this video was particularly helpful, please toss it a cheeky like. And with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye everyone.